Are we allowed to voice our concerns about Louie now? I'm not trying to, I, you know what? I just want to talk it out with you guys. I want to work through my concerns together because I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be concerned, but I also am. Okay. That's just where I'm at. That's just where I'm at. I was, I am concerned. Okay. Period. A done deal. And I would like to work through this together. And maybe by the time I'm done working through it together, I won't be as concerned. But ever since we were introduced to Brooks, I'm on high alert. Okay. That, that, that story, Dirty John, it's like a template for these long cons where you get a weird feeling, but then they're so good and they treat the woman so well that you're like, am I just being a hater? I don't want to be a hater. Like, what's he getting out of this? And then you're like, well, I mean, he's getting, they didn't sign a prenup. He got that out of her. He convinced her. Well, I mean, she didn't really need convincing. Even Gia thought it was not romantic. So there's that. And, you know, there's, I don't know. Okay. So, you know, we're going to work through this together because I, if you've been following from the start of the season, I've, I've been like, I like Louie. And now I'm like, well, this last episode got me a little nervous. So we're in this together though. That's what this podcast is for, to work through our sometimes complicated feelings about these shows. Okay comedically with with humor because that's how I use that's what I use to deflect from all of my problems which is why I'm a mess okay all right let's get into this let's get I'm going to start today's episode I'm a solo I'm a solo writer today because I I wanted to just absorb all of these shows or all of them both of these shows by myself with you guys of course and I'm going to start with Jersey because that oh, – I was going to say because that's a little more complicated. But let's face it, Summer House is complicated and not fun at all. My God. So let's 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 get into it. Uh, but before I do, if you haven't already, please leave a nice review, five-star review on any platform that you listen. It really helps the show out. It's a nice free way to support the show. Gets the algorithm feeling sexy for the show. Okay? That's the only pitch I'm going to put you guys through. Okay? Here at She Speaks Bravo, we believe that Bravo TV is a great form of self-care and therapy. Look at me. I've been using it for over a decade, and I am a complete mess. That's me, by the way. I'm Emily, and I'm your host on this journey. What is this, honey? I love that. If you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and hit that notification bell, because I'm releasing new episodes at least three times a week. Clip! You fool! That's my opinion! I talk Bravo, I talk true crime, and sometimes I talk a little scripted. So whatever you're here for, I hope you enjoy the show. Right the next morning, post luau party. I have to, it's just a small thing, guys. It's a small thing. But Marge is such a fucking hypocrite. She's such a... F Jackie, of course she did. Right away. She says that Bill and Jen were both wasted and they have to be wasted to be together because they're not doing very well. I told you she was going to use whatever Jen said to her against her. Was I wrong? No. Marge goes, they have to be medicated to be together. When, as soon as they woke up in the, in the morning when they did their wake-ups, Marge says to Joe B, you were wasted last night. So does your husband have to be wasted to be with you? Huh? So we get we have we have a lot of houses because we got a lot of people. It's a pretty big cast. Finally, we got we have more people. We have Jen's house, which has Danielle and Teresa, and Danielle is pissed because they were talking about her brother and that whole story. Over at Rachel's house, 
I mean, Dolores is really leaning into this whole thing not being, she's like, do I mean, do I think it was because she got blocked on Instagram? No. Fessler, then what is it? Wow, guys, so you really are digging. I don't know. This isn't really, this is feeling Beverly Hillsy to me. This isn't really like Jersey. You know, Jersey's like, you don't talk about the family. That's Jersey's style. This is, this isn't Dolores's style either. It's bizarre. I, I'm like, what show are we watching? This doesn't feel like you guys to be this concerned with like other people's business. Maybe Rachel, maybe Melissa, but not Dolores. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Dolores, it's is out of character for Dolores. Danielle, though, has figured out Rachel is not the buddy that I thought she was. And then Marge brings up, she's like, okay, so Louie wanted to invite your mom. Or she says Louie did invite your mom, but no, your mom wasn't there. And how Teresa said that they they have a history. And we can always count on Dolores to do one thing. Dolores lets us know when it comes to families, kids are off limits, but moms are definitely off limits. So when Teresa said there's a history there with the mom, she wished Teresa hadn't done that because you don't, don't do that. Don't bring up the moms. It's like when Dolores said earlier in the season, um, in an Italian family, it's a big deal where you sit. You can always count on Dolores to let us know those sorts of things. So for Marge, she's like, you know, Lou, it's good, right? Louie wanted to invite your mom, but they're, well, I, I actually don't know. Marge is kind of like, Joe B and Marge and Melissa and Joe are kind of all like, I don't know. Was that just to make himself look good? So they've all sort of seen this side of Louis before where he's kind of performative in a way. And then Joe Gorga is in a confessional and producer says, did something happen that there was a shift? Long pause. Yes. And then Teresa's confessional. I kept my mouth shut all those years to keep the peace, but I'm going to speak the truth. You know, that sort of shit just gets us going, right, as Bravo fans? Like when you tell us there's years of stuff you haven't talked about and now you're going to say it, chills. Chills come, they come over our bodies because, <laughs> say it, just say it. So we find out about Pizzagate. I got to tell you guys, I, I don't get how... I don't get it. Okay, so here's what I don't get. Joe comes up with this pizza oven idea, which is a pizza place idea, right? That's what it is. Like a pizza oven idea. Does, it's confusing to me. But a pizza place idea, right? Louie puts up $250,000. And this is according to Teresa. And according to... His, their attorney, the attorney says, all right, well, Joe will get cut in for 5%. Joe got mad and he's like, I expected 50%. And then according to Teresa, she calls Joe and says, if you want half, put half in. And so then Louie just takes the loss. Okay, that's an interesting way to put it. But Joe's version is he went to Louie with this idea about a, a pizza place in honor of their father, his nephews involved. And then suddenly there are these boxes with Teresa and her daughters on them called Skinny Pizza. And he calls up Louie. Louie's yelling at him and Teresa's yelling, did you put up the fucking money? And Melissa's now crying in memory of it like you took this idea from him. So somewhere in the middle has to be this truth, right? Because so Louie puts all the money up, but you expected to get half? Where's the disconnect? So you, did you, what? Like, I don't understand. You came to, you went to Louie with this idea to do this, like, you know, homage to no no it was going to be like a joint thing for Teresa and for you okay cool did 
Louis take, did he steal the idea? And you didn't know? You had to have known. You had to have known, right? Because his nephew was involved. So he knew, okay, okay, so I'm following. Then there are already boxes involved. Okay, so so Joe, did Joe intend to not put any money up? but still be cut in for 50%? I, that's what happened, right? And then Teresa's saying, if you want to put the money up, then put, like, put the other, what would that be? $125, $125, $125,000 up, right? Right? And if Joe could, he would have just been like, here you go. Okay, sorry, I got you. I just don't understand. That doesn't, that doesn't seem that impractical to me. But, but now Melissa's crying, acting like this was stolen from him. Who steals an idea? Well, was it stolen? I am just, it seems like such a simple solution. If this is an idea that you want to open up this place, then then give the opening investment capital or work out a deal where like on the back end, there's something. I don't know. I, okay. Anywho, I'm moving on, but whenever that was, that clearly was worth huge rift lies. And okay, moving on. I'm moving on. Now we're at Rachel's brunch. Did you see those fucking slabs of meat? Slabs of meat. Then this poor mermaid lady. <laughs> it's like such a small event, and she's sitting relatively close to the guests on just like this chair going like this. I do agree with Fessler. It's just odd. These like single performers having to like do this for hours and hours at a party. What does Jackie do? What I tell you guys Jackie would do. She did exactly what I said. Immediately tells the women what Jen told her about her issues with Bill. They're fighting. Oh, oh, Jen told me that they're fighting over how they're raising their kids. Told you. I told you. I knew it. Jackie is not to be trusted. But this does soften Dolores because Dolores is, because Dolores is everything. She's like, look, even if I'm mad at you, I do still care about you. Of course you do, Dolores. <clears throat> Ugh, I'm like, okay, real quick tangent. I broke out in hives. Honestly, I have no idea why. Yesterday around three o'clock and I'm still like, dealing with it that's why i'm like trying I, I almost wanted to put one of the masks i almost want to put a mask on because it's like but i'm itching i can still feel it my throat started to close up a little bit too so i ran to get a claritin and i thought it would be gone by today i have no idea did i change d detergent my throat still is a little bit tingly so if you see me itching and you see me like going, this is for anyone watching on video, if you see me like going to scratch my face and stopping myself, I have literally hives. They're just popping up in my ears. Oh, I took a Claritin again today. Ah, okay. The show must go on. Okay. Louis, okay. They talk about Louis, Louis Instagram that he did with Nate and Bill. Th those are the ones where he like talks right to the camera and he gets very serious and he's like, I'm going to talk about forgiveness. You know, in the world where he squints, you know, he squints his eyes. Talk about forgiveness in this world. Forgiveness. Lots of forgiveness about, you know, not all forgiveness. But then I'm, it's, I'm sorry. It was funny because then Jill Gorga does one with like John Fuda. Is that his name? John? John, right? Uh, about the waxing. But okay. I think I posted one of the, I believe I ended up posting it in my stories because Louis does these where he does the stories where he's talking to the camera and he's very serious and he's like people ask me what I'm doing uh why why I do what I do and you know it's right here and he'll like show Teresa and like Melania and he like has a guru the motivational type message and it gives me a little bit of the icks but I don't want to say that because I don't want people to think I'm not supporting Teresa and her happiness. But it does. It gives me like a con artist vibe. But I don't want to say that. But that's what he did. He made that, he made that 
post with Nate and Bill. Marge is still pissed at Danielle for talking behind her back. How dare she? How fucking dare she talk about her? Jen asks Dolores, though, they have a moment where Jen is calm, Dolores is calm, and she says, I'd love to get together this week and talk. And it feels so good. Feels like this is it. This is it. It's happening. Thank God I need it to end. Listen to me right now. Preventative care. You need to be using products that prevent damage, that prevent aging. That is why you need Kitsch in your life. Kitsch has all the products that keep you looking young, that keep your hair silky and healthy, that keep your skin healthy and youthful. Let me tell you about it. They started in 2010, female founded, self funded. They sold hair ties door to door. With that hustle, they are now sold in over 20,000 retail locations. But what made them so amazing is they created revolutionary products. They figured out that regular old hair ties were creating so much damage in the hair. And then they, they took it and they ran with it. Now they've got satin pillowcases, caps, eye masks, and that is vegan satin, cruelty-free. Hello. They also do shampoo and conditioner bars, bottle-free beauty, so great for the environment. I never even thought of that, but hello. What they're most known for are their heatless satin curling rollers. You can say goodbye to heat damage. There are literally TikTok videos of people tossing out their $600 curling irons for these things. And the amazing thing is they are a fraction of the price, only $18. Kitsch also has those quick dry hair towels and the classic hair ties. I found Kitsch many, many, many years ago when I discovered that pillowcases that come like in your sheet sets can damage the hell out of your hair and cause wrinkles. I've never looked back. And that's when I discovered that hair ties hurt your hair. Kitsch led the way in this revolutionary discovery, preventative damage. That's all I can say. Once the damage is done, there's no turning back. Right now, Kitsch is offering our listeners 30% off their entire order at mykitsch.com slash she speaks. That's right. 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash she speaks. One more time, mykitsch.com slash she speaks for 30% off your entire order. So, but Marge pulls Danielle aside and my God, Jesus Christ, Marge, take it down. Danielle's like, time out, because this was not Danielle meets up with Rachel to talk shit about Marge. So she's like, Rachel, get the hell over here. Rachel, though, Oof, it's like she, as soon as Danielle started talking a little bit of smack at that shopping thing, Rachel went, I'm not saying a word because I plan on telling Marge. So she, and Rachel's like, well, isn't that what you said? That she has an arsenal? And Danielle's like, but that's, that's like trying to stir shit up between us. Like, why would you do that? And Marge is like, why would that even be in your head? Why would that even be in your head? What the hell? And Danielle's like, I don't know, but your ex-best friend is saying this. And what... Marge is, it's not gaslighting, but it's, it's, it's so accusatory because she knows it's true. That's why she's like, do you believe everything you hear from someone I have an argument with? It's like, she's just not believing it. It's maybe accusatory isn't the right word. She's repeating. She's repeating. And you're really coming after her. Meanwhile, Jen over there, because Melissa's like, heard it came from you. And Jen's like, I'd say it to her face. Okay. Danielle's like, you said shit too, Rachel. And when Rachel goes, what did I say? Tell me. I didn't say anything. I'm like, God, this chick is, she's playing the game. I'll tell you that much. Marge is, she's like, I'm not going to have someone seething high school all over the place. Fucking graduate. And she walks off. She's vicious vicious this woman jackie tries to talk to dolores about paul and frankie and has the nerve 
to say, I have an independent friendship with Frank and he's upset. Shut the fuck up, okay? Dolores has it exactly right. In her confessional, she's like, I finally got what you've all been asking me to get, which is a man of my own. And now you're going to pull this? Get out of here. We're not worried about poor little Frank right now. And don't you have an independent friendship with Frank? Get the hell out of here, lady. All right. Fessler goes over to Louie and she's like, I think it was so great that you wanted to make peace. And Louie says something I want to harp on. He says he lost years with his sister because he was in relationship with awful women. Now, some of these women have come forward and admitted that he was extremely, it, it was narcissistic abuse, basically, um, and which to, to which he's, you know, called them crazy. And look, I got a crazy ex of my own. And if he were to come out with stuff, eh, some of it might be true because my behavior was psycho in that. And I, I'm using that term correctly to describe myself because I went nuts in that relationship with him. But that was because it was it was provoked and it came out of a bad, toxic relationship. See what I'm trying to get at here? You know, like he, Louie, might have been messing with this person and she didn't do so well. And so he's discredited all these women and is that – what? what I mean, I believed some of what they said. And now Teresa's really close with his sister. She has a really good relationship with them. I'm just noting that. I'm just keeping little notes. I'm just keeping little freaking notes, you know, just keeping notes here and there. Teresa says, again, if her brother had called her to say, can you invite my mother-in-law? I would have said, no problem. I don't understand why... She, like enough people told her that she that they were upset about it. I don't know. I... Teresa says years ago there was stuff, and Jackie Jackie's like overhearing this. Years ago there was stuff, and Jackie's like, I can't, I can't even hear this. I can't even hear this. Fessler's trying to be like, well, Melissa's viewing it as a slight. Teresa goes, it's not a slight. No, it's literally a slight, though. It's literally a slight. And then Teresa with a classic Teresa-ism. He's making a mountain out of a mole hall. <laughs> Teresa sends Louie. I don't know if she sent Louie to talk to Melissa or if he said, I'm going to go talk to her. Can I go talk to her? So Louie takes Melissa off to the side and he does something that is quite a um, manipulative tactic. It's been used often. He holds her hand. He's like, hold my hand, hold my hand, hold my hand. That is something that is used to influence people. And when you force someone to physically touch you, it kind of makes them listen to you. And it's not necessarily the most um, – it's, it's something to note for sure. And he said that her mother-in-law has always been so sweet and nice to him and his boys. And she said she was obsessed with you. Meanwhile, Jackie tells Teresa that Melissa was crying this morning. And Teresa hates that. Well, she can call her sister-in-law then. Well, can she? I don't really know about that. Ah. Danielle joins and says, uh, she's like, look, I don't care what you guys are talking about here, okay? Because we're going to talk about me now. It really pissed me off that we were all talking about my brother last night. But I, again, again, I'm shocked that Dolores is involved in this. Because Dolores really is... I mean, maybe she's just stepping up to the plate and being a housewife this season. So maybe I shouldn't be so mad about it. Got to tell you. Because Jackie, Fessler, and Dolores all try to pull something out. Like, I don't know. Maybe you're not being so honest. It couldn't just be the Instagram thing. I don't know. And Danielle is done. And she leaves. I got to tell you, as much as you know I love Danielle, not the move. Not the move. Where it is more than that. And if you didn't want to talk about your brother, then you maybe shouldn't have mentioned him, period. Because you said in your confessional that it had a little bit to do with his uh, wife. There is more to the story, but you're not sharing it with them. 
And I know people are going to say, she shouldn't share with these women. Do you see what they do? Yeah, but you're on this show. So that's, you, you brought it up to the group and you gave them this tiny morsel. And then you expect them to be like, oh my God, so sad. But you want them to connect to you. So like, I think she is playing this kind of strange. I do. I think this is an odd choice. Like, don't bring it up then. Like, it's, is it your storyline? Is it not your storyline? What is it? Don't talk about it then. Pick another, pick another thing in your family because I don't get it. And then you're going to leave dramatically and say, fuck you guys, I'm done. I actually am going to side a little bit. I know you guys probably hate that, but I don't get it. I really don't. And when you guys, I know it's like, it's none of your business. Why did you bring it up? It's okay. Moving on. We have bigger fish to fry. Although actually, let me talk about Marge's confessional. Danielle's been talking shit about me nonstop. Okay, relax. She hasn't been talking shit about you nonstop. She said one thing. And I'm not leaving in a huff. And then she says, maybe I should call your brother and your sister-in-law. Maybe they would like to tell me some stories about you. Because I could put that in my arsenal. I'm sure she has. I'm sure she already fucking did, actually. So Teresa now equates what just happened... Just like me, if Joe and Melissa would have called me right from the beginning and said, Donna Marco should have invited, should have been invited, it would have been so easy. (laughs) They tried to explain that the issue was that she didn't invite her, period. Like, you didn't invite her at all. And now it's on them. Well, they should have called you to be like, why didn't you invite her? We'd see they could have called. It's like, no, Teresa, you didn't invite her (laughs) to begin with. (laughs) That's the issue. So Teresa's like, oh, they're having a problem. Like, now's a good time for me to go over there and talk to Melissa. So Teresa goes over and joins Melissa and Louie. And she's like, okay, what's going on? I want to know what the problem was with all this. And Louie's like, there's no problem, babe. Teresa, no, they said there is. And is that why you're upset about something? Melissa's so thrown off because she's having this like absurdly peaceful because Louis in his very peaceful toned voice. And now here comes this. Well, I was upset that you said you had issues with my mom or something. I said, there's a history there with your family. All defensive, right? And Louie, Teresa, you're coming over here and you're ruining a moment with me and Melissa. Res- really respect our space. <laughs> Teresa's like, I don't get, okay, all right. But Jackie just said, and Louie goes, I don't care if God came down and said something to you. It's not fair what you're doing. But my point is I was going to invite just one, I wasn't going to invite just one person. Louie goes, babe, I'm sorry. You're not making any sense with what you're saying. Teresa, but they're saying... Sorry. <laughs> when, you, when you read just the dialogue, it's really stupid. Louis like, Teresa, Teresa, it doesn't matter what anyone else is saying. You have to respect that I'm here talking to your sister-in-law. So, okay, when when I don't, when I'm not watching Louis doing this. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest. I, okay. <laughs> I saw a bunch of people posting, of course, that it was like, ooh, this side of Louie was scary. In this first moment right here, I was like, I kind of get it, Louie. This was Teresa sabotaging what could be a potentially peaceful moment. It was. This is what Teresa does. She's that simple black and white minded person who even though she she knows that Louie's over there potentially making peace she's like they could have called me and they could have said and she gets into that mode right and now she's like I don't know Jackie's over there no I okay but I don't eat and then she did like you can't get her out of it and I understood Louie being like you're not making sense so But remember, I have very toxic issues. So, you know, we're not listening to me. 
But Melissa's like, there are two sides. And clearly production is experiencing it this way too because that's how they're splicing it together. So when like the ominous music comes in and Melissa's confessional spliced in saying, there are two sides to Louie and he can't control his anger. I'm like, oh shit. Yes, that's the, mm -hmm. yeah, too angry. But I was like, yeah, get out of there, Teresa. Get out. Now Joe joins the conversation and... Louis goes real nice voice again, back to nice voice. And Louis Louis says he tries to he tried to find her mom and invite her to the wedding. But now Teresa's back with the women. My brother needs therapy and Melissa has daddy issues. And Jackie's like, oh. that's all she did, by the way. And Teresa screamed, Jackie, shut the fuck up. Get out of my fucking face. <laughs> Jackie actually hadn't said anything. She just scoffed a little bit. <laughs> Jackie tries to be like, that's a mean thing to say about someone who lost their father at 16. But, okay, but I, uh, Teresa actually made a lot of sense here, which was, she's like, T it's not a bad thing because Melissa has talked about it before. <laughs> Oh, my God. Then her confessional. Her dad would go out all the time. Dad was cheating on the mom. He was never home. So that's why she's always had a leash on my brother. <laughs> Fucking Christ. But then Teresa, to them, she's like, my daughters have daddy issues. I mean, the fact that she said that, it's like, oh, there's hope. Okay, Melissa then leaves that conversation. Like, Let me go check on them. So now it's just Joe and Louie. And Louie. Tells Joe, you know, I live with your four nieces. I wear your father's pajamas at night to make them feel safe and loving. The after show, Teresa clarified that Nono actually never wore those pajamas. Nono had a bunch of clothes that he never wore, and he's technically never worn those pajamas. So it's not like he's wearing a dead man's used pajamas. They were like, I don't know if these were like his signature pajamas and like, I don't know. But he, so technically he never wore them. Unused. Okay. Do with that what you will. It was just a weird thing to say without that added context. I wish he had said, don't worry, he's never worn them. It's just like they miss Nono and like, it's silly, but like I wear the, I don't know. <laughs> it's still a weird thing to say. So Teresa asks why she – now Teresa's gone over there. Why you didn't call to tell me to invite Donna Marco? Teresa's now joined the boys. Joe's like, oh, we're not playing that, okay? I called Gia and I called Louie about the bridesmaid thing and you did nothing. Joe goes, I'm so mad at you. Teresa interrupts and she's like, I'm upset too. Last year, I just felt like you and Melissa should have had my back more. And here we go again. Here we go again. It's like the same exact fight. And I'm like, I can't do, I can't do this again. It's the same loop. Now, Melissa joins and Teresa's like, why didn't you have my back against Marge? They say, why didn't you have his back against Jen? Then Melissa, I, you know, I hate when you talk the bullshit and Teresa leaves and tells Louie, fix it. And then Louie's like, well, if you stay. And Melissa says, this is your brother. You fix it. And OK, so now we get into a little bit more of it. And Teresa goes, my poor brother, he's tired. This is where it gets very um, Italian right now. Poor, precious Joe. Precious, precious Joe Gorga. Now, Teresa, my poor brother, he's tired. I'm the, Melissa. I'm the one holding him all the time. Okay. Joe has a lot more of a role to play in this, you guys. Come on now. Teresa, how many times has Teresa said this? Then you should make it better. And so Melissa goes back to like, this is the root of it. Melissa's always gotten the, you know, the, you should make it better. It's on you. Joe says to Teresa, you're happy, right? Why are you so mean now? Because I've been happy. Teresa goes, I don't think so. Because if you were happy, you would want to fix it. I mean, this is like Groundhog's Day. We have been here for years. 
Melissa, we didn't keep you out of the family. You kept us out of the family. This is your blood. And Jennifer made fun of him and you chimed in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, you guys. We've done this so many times. Joe gets up to leave and Louie says, bitch boy, you're playing it real well. What the fuck, Louie? Where did this come from? God. So now they leave. Melissa gets up. Joe gets up. Before he leaves, though, Joe goes, they've become the biggest disappointment in life. Teresa says, you could change that. And once again, they love to say this. The matriarch of our family. So Italian. Hilariously, though, they can't drive off because I think Louie's car is blocking theirs. So they're doing this like <laughs> they can't get out. But Marge and Rachel, they go over to talk to Teresa and Louie. And Teresa tells Marge that she's got to make Melissa understand that if she had stood up for her, you know, it would have been different. Louie suddenly is like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. Because I guess Marge starts kind of trying to say something. And for Louis, he can tell that uh, Teresa's not listening. And it's odd the way he does this. He gets up. He's so frustrated with Teresa. He then starts kneeling down, almost like he's begging her. He's like, because you're not listening to her. He's like, please. And neither is your brother. You and your brother have the exact same problem. She goes, no, we don't. Louis says, when you believe something, you're stuck on that thing and you can't get off it. Yeah, dude. It's not impossible that you guys would have the exact same thing. Your dad raised both of you. So you guys got the same problem. But it, what confuses me is how Louis, maybe he was just really mad, but after that podcast happened and he was like, they will never miss an opportunity to put you down and blah, blah, blah. It's like, so what? You know what I mean? Like, so you, which one do you believe? It's hard to keep track of it. I mean, I, to be honest, I do kind of, I agree with him. They're both so stubborn. So Joe has to, though, come in, though, and be like, Louie, can you move your car? Do you mind? Joe sees Marge, though, and he's like, what are you sitting with Margaret for? She's so dirty. Teresa, she's your best friend. So do you see the similarities between you two? Louie's like, stop. He's enjoying this now, which is accurate. That's accurate. Joe go, wait, wait, did Margaret cause our whole family problem? I can't tell if Louie was just trying to get Joe to, like, walk away. Like, let's go, let's go. And then Joe's like, oh, you want to dance, bro? And then Louie turns around and he's like, I'm going to punch him in the face. Joe, stop. Please. You're being fucking smart. Because I got nothing to fucking lose. Do you understand me? I don't understand any of that. You turned around. You said, I'm going to punch him. Then you said, Joe, stop, please. And then you said, basically, I'll fucking punch you, too. Like, the mood swings are definitely real and confusing. It's like he's, that's why he went to that retreat thing. I think he's really fighting a true inner dark person. Because then Joe bucks up and Louis is like, let's go move. Let's go. Let's go get you guys out of here. And gives the Gorgas this like, I love you speech. And they're both looking at him like, what? You're part of it. You did stuff. We don't get what's going on. And then Teresa's in there telling Marge, if they wanted to fix it, they would. And Melissa doesn't want to fix it. It's always on Melissa. But I, there's, a, there's an element of truth to that. There is. Because... There is. I just think there is. But now we are at the point of, for me, absolute repetition. So they need to start doing the part where Teresa said, we will see all the things that the audience needs to see that exposes them. Because I don't 
and now this is the repetition that I was hoping we wouldn't get this season and we're here and I'm like, oh my God, I, this is the same fucking fight over and over again. Let me talk about the after show though, before we get into Summer House. The after show. They talk about Pizzagate and Marge says that they were told specifically not to talk about it because it would make Louie look bad. And Teresa says she didn't want to talk about it because she didn't want to make Joe look bad. And allegedly, Teresa told Joe not to tell anyone about it. And Teresa says, why is my brother mad? He didn't lose the money. If anything, Louie should be mad. So those are the conflicting stories on Pizzagate. The conversation with Melissa, Joe, uh, and Louie. Melissa, this is Melissa's take. She's like, it's weird to them the way Louis acts with them. Like, he's only known them for a year, and it all just seems so, like, intense and dramatic. The drastic mood swings are something that they, she's like, I don't know if I'll ever, like, get used to that. And Melissa points out that he had a conversation with his nieces about how they're horrible people, and that, which is the scene after the podcast. And then in the next breath, He's telling Teresa that she's wrong and that he wants to make peace and he loves them. And that is true. That's very true. We can pull all, and they pulled, if you watch the app, they pull all the footage and compile that together. Teresa says she's kept her, she's kept seeing her fiance. She's like, I just keep seeing Louie trying and trying and trying. I will be interested to see how Teresa feels. I don't know if she's going to watch this season because she admittedly doesn't watch the show. But at the reunion, I hope she's watched this season and I want to see like when she watches what Louis says when she's not in the scene, like, what do you feel about that? Melissa says Joe was engaged before, twice, but didn't marry them because Teresa didn't like them and basically like pushed them off. We got the mid-season trailer. Not going to lie, I was underwhelmed. I was extremely underwhelmed. It kind of showed me that it's going to be a lot more of the same. And it's that big finale party drama that we that got leaked. That's kind of it. It's the big finale party that's going to be the thing. That is sort of the, the only thing that's left. I was underwhelmed. Got to tell you, wasn't too excited. The only thing that looks really exciting in it is Danielle and Marge in Marge's face and Marge and Danielle's face. I'm like, oh, give me that. But they didn't even really give away much of what happens with Melissa and Teresa. So I'm telling you, the editing on this show, they need a new post team. Okay. On that note, let's take a little break and let's get into Summer House. Okay. For the third week in a row, I tossed out an unopened bag of pre-chopped Brussels sprouts, a container of pre-chopped butternut squash, and a little bit of my soul. I just don't like being in a kitchen. This is why I need Factor. I need America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. I need those delicious chef-prepared meals delivered straight to my door. And I need to get it together. It is the end of March, and it is time that we start thinking about looking good for the hot summer months. My sister's wedding is in August, and they've got over at Factor that calorie smart plan with meals at around 550 calories or less. And that's what I'm signing up for. If you are like too busy to cook or just hate cooking, and I can cook for the record, I just don't like it. With Factor, you can skip all of that. You can skip the cooking and the chopping and the prepping and the cleaning up. Their meals are never frozen. They're super fresh. And I have tried so many meal delivery services because I've been on a mission to not have to cook food for at least two years. And I found Factor's meals to be the best by far in terms of taste and satiation. Is that a word? And I'll tell you why. They're dietitian approved, so they're nutritious. But the dietitian ensures that there's all the ingredients you need to feel full. I discovered Factor when I was keto. That didn't last very long. But 
That's how I discovered it. So keto is an option. And for my vegan veggie babes, they have that too. There's also protein plus. There are 34 meals to pick from each week. So you never get bored. And they have breakfast options. So there's eggs and smoothies plus snacks. You can add on snacks. I love snacks, need snacks. Anything that keeps me from ordering takeout because takeout is expensive. And Factor is like a fraction of that cost. Plus Factor is ready in two minutes as where delivery can take sometimes over an hour. And I'm embarrassed to admit the amount of times I check that tracker. And for my veggie vegan peeps, like I said, there's a ton of options. And let's say you find one of those vegan veggie meals that sounds delicious and you're like, man, I wish I could add some protein to it. You can. That's an option too. Factor is like the easy, kind of lazy way to eat clean. You just pick your meals, they get delivered to you, they're delicious, you heat them up in two minutes, no prep, no mess at the end, and you're done. Head to factormeals.com slash shespeaks50 and use code shespeaks50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code shespeaks50 at factormeals.com slash shespeaks50 to get 50% off your first box. All right, Summer House, let's try it. Here we go. Paige and Craig have another little scene in her apartment. And I can't tell if they just weren't on the same page for what they wanted this scene to be or if they're this is real. Because she wants it to be a cute scene about how she wants him to redo his bathroom. And he wants it to be a scene about what the next steps are. But she is happy doing what she is doing. She has her friends in New York. She loves her life. He gets to visit sometimes. But he's like, I'd like you to come down more. And she's like, yeah, okay. I don't really want to, but okay. And he's like, can I at least keep some stuff here? And she's like, all right. But like that closet is for my spring coats. And... (laughs) Like, I can't tell if it seems legit to me. Like, it seems like she's not acting or anything. Craig wants the romance. Like, that is Craig. Craig loves. Did Craig say it was like a Lifetime movie when they were in Winter House? Craig loves that. He wants, I'm sure he wants to propose on camera. I'm sure he wants all of that. Paige is not a super affectionate person. So this must be like not her thing we'll see it play out i guess but now we get amanda and Lindsay's lunch amanda showed up like i'm not gonna give you anything i'm gonna be like what (laughs) what are you doing like that's the vibe i got from her even though her words weren't totally matching that because Lindsay's like, I just feel like, you know, I'm glad I'm glad we're sitting down and having this talk because I feel like I haven't been able to, like, talk to you. And Amanda goes, I've been around. Let's, like, dive into that. Was that her way of saying, Lindsay, what are you talking about? You've literally had a chance to talk to me. Because she has. That is that is accurate. And Lindsay's saying that line is a little silly considering they've been around each other for a couple weekends now. So what she wanted to say was, I was hoping you would pull me aside to have this conversation. That's what I, that's what she should have said. Lindsay's nervous and that's kind of rare. And it's sad because Amanda really should have been the one to have this conversation. Amanda has no desire to have this conversation. Amanda just wants Lindsay to get over it. Ugh, like what? <laughs> What is even that big of a deal? Amanda, you are so sensitive that I'm a little shocked you're not more sensitive to Lindsay's feelings. You know, like, Amanda, you're the most sensitive woman around. And I'm sensitive, so I get it. But like when other people are hurt by my actions, I'm pretty like I kind of go out of my way a little bit. But she's kind of got the vibe of like, okay, like, and... So Lindsay's like, I thought we were getting closer. But then 
you're saying things like first it was like too soon we were moving in and then he was tainted by Lindsay and I just didn't know where that came from. And Amanda says, I apologized and I was frustrated by the fact that Carl's opinion was changing from what it had been over the summer. Okay. And Amanda says, and I'm assuming this was like after the reunion, clearly this happened off camera. She says, I tried to apologize to you at the bar, but you didn't even turn around. So I was like, okay, well, forget it. And I, obviously we don't know exactly what she meant by the bar, what, when that was, where that was. So Lindsay, I swear, started to cry, but not a tear came out. Not a one. Uh, so she's like, I am more sensitive than you guys think I am. Like, I come off really tough, but it was... I didn't realize that you all judged me like you did. Fair, you guys. Fair. Because y'all talked shit about her all season long. So I'm sure for her to watch that back is like, Jesus. She doesn't say shit about you guys. Not anything about you guys. L truly, though, actually. Like, I don't think she says one thing about Paige being with Craig or anything. Am I missing something? I might be forgetting something. You know, this memory of mine, feel free to weigh in because I might be forgetting something. But it is kind of true. And they, Lindsay just gets under their skin. But again, she does the cry face and the cry sound. And no, no tears come out. <laughs> not a one. Not one tear comes out. So Amanda does, okay, this is very, it's fair. Amanda's like, the comment about moving in too soon, it wasn't meant to be so malicious. That is the thing about Lindsay. You can't say one thing. Lindsay takes everything because she doesn't say anything about anyone. And if you don't think it's fast to move in like that, like, how do you not think that's fast? How can you not be like, I know, I know, it's soon, it's soon, but we're doing it. I think it's like if someone goes, if someone's like this, ooh, that's fast. Ooh, that's one thing. But what about like, ooh, that's fast. That's not so bad, you know? I think that Lindsay is so defensive. Fair enough. There's reason to be defensive. I understand that. But that is, but also, Amanda, you were psychotically mean at the fucking reunion. Like, really mean at the reunion. Ha ha ha. My hives. Oh, my God. I need to take... I'm going to take a Benadryl at, like, 4 p.m. Because... What's happening to me? I swear to God. I'm like, I just want to take all my makeup off and just itch my whole face and my ears. Oh, my God. Nothing like scratching and or wanting to scratch an itch. Oh, my God. Okay. Whew. Sorry, guys. Amanda says that yeah, this should be our summer. The four of us, this should be our summer. And then we get a new confessional look from Amanda. And I was like, and I audibly went, whoa, at the side of that denim shirt situation. I was like, oh, fuck, what the fuck is that? You know, but I don't know fashion. Look at me. You guys probably look at my clothes. <laughs> you guys probably look at my clothes all the time and are like, God, this poor woman. And you wouldn't be wrong. You wouldn't be incorrect. Ooh, now let's talk about Robert and Danielle. Ooh. <laughs> oh, shit. God, not great. Robert doesn't look great. Now, I got to tell you, it's not a joke about these chef hours, man. They're built a certain way. They really are. Because I, as the manager, would work a lot of hours, but the chefs work more. They would get there before me and they would leave after me. And I was working 12 hours, 14 hours. So they're working 14, 18 hours. Like that's more, that's too much. It's too much. And they party. Yeah, they do, you know, I'd party with them. And there's nothing like a dark chef. A chef that... He, they have a darkness to them. They're the, they're fun. They're a blast. 
they're creative, they're artists, but they're dark. And I was like, oh, he looked gaunt. He looked dark. He didn't look great at all. And the dynamic between them was like Danielle has sacrificed a lot of her own needs to be with him. And Robert is just surviving. For a lot of chefs that don't have the option of like opening up a place and assigning a sous chef and a bunch of cooks under them and it popping in and out, no relationships can really sustain it. Honestly, they're just, they're, they're not around. And there's when you, and anyone who's worked in the restaurant industry knows there's something about when you've worked a long shift, you do just want to get fucked up. You're tired and you're like, I know it's the worst thing for me to do right now, but I do just want to get wasted. And that's what Robert did. We'll get to it. But he didn't look, the dynamic was sad. And she talks about how Rob, uh, Lindsay and Carl will be there and she has a tone to it. Robert's like, I haven't seen much of them since they started dating. And she's like, they're in that, you know, like honeymoon phase, you know. Like, you know, and he's like, oh, are you saying we're not in our honeymoon phase? Danielle says, ours is like an adventure. Some days I see you, some days I don't. I wouldn't consider that an adventure. That's more like, I, just on an adventure. An adventure is not that. So she's done what she can to make it work for her and it's not working for her and she doesn't know how to say it's not working for her because she loves him the only thing that's getting in their way right now is his career. The physical amount of hours he has to be there and what the toll it takes. The toll it takes, I tell you. Uh, I love how often, this is the, I think, second or third time Amanda and Kyle pull up and have a, have a complaint about the park jobs that they're all doing. Just, you know, they're the vets. They're the veterans. They, you know, they got something to say. So they all they're all getting ready for dinner and Robert I mean this this man busted out such a feast but he is running all around I thought that was kind of shitty for Danielle to ask him to cook I thought it would have been nice for her just to say I'm going to order us a bunch of food and I'm going to spend time with you that that was a strange move I don't know if if he said I would like to do that, if this was like a good PR move on his part or something. But I was like, God, girl, just like let him sit and enjoy some time with you and relax. Because he was in and out getting that grill going. He, I mean, the spread that ended up happening here was crazy. Meanwhile, the ladies are getting, everyone's getting ready. And Amanda chats with Paige and Sierra about her lunch with Lindsay. And it's very much like, I mean, it was just like, oh whatever you know like what's like what is even your problem like what is even like the vocal fry what is like I don't even like understand what Lindsay's problem is like and Paige is like I don't know what Lindsay's mad at <laughs> guys for fuck's sake come on this is after winter house too okay guys oh the fuck <laughs> you guys are such bitches come on so it's dinner time. Poor Robert. Robert, <laughs> this was such a huge spread <laughs> for so many people. He just whipped this up. One person. One. One fucking person did this. God. And someone asked, I can't remember who, was like, what have you heard so far about us, Robert? And he says, I've heard that the new class is a lot better than the old class. I took that to mean that compared to last season, right? Does that, or wait, or did that mean, because then even Lindsay's like, wait, what does that mean? And now even I'm like, wait, does that mean, hold on. So wait, what did that mean? 
Who did we have last season? Who was the, who was new last season? Maya, she's back. Uh Wait, did she seriously mean <laughs> does she mean the new people are better than like the returning people? Hold on. Robert, keep that to yourself. <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh, my God. Okay, Paige asks the couples, what's the one thing? Because there's three whole couples. What's the one thing that you didn't anticipate when you moved in with your boyfriend? And Robert is like, God, I didn't anticipate the amount of stuff that she has. I'm a minimalist. And Paige is like, I'm a minimalist, too. I am, too. So I get this. She's like, I would throw out my birth certificate if I felt like it was cluttering. I would, too. I think I might have. Uh and so I get that. Lindsay, her thing is Carl uses a new towel every time he showers. I would get annoyed by that too, actually. What do you do? Like, there would be how many towels would there be in, hanging in there? That's so much laundry. What's the most annoying habit? Amanda, first she goes breathing. And then, no, it's chewing. The chewing. I mean, they're, they're all joking. Like, these are couples that are kind of joking, and Robert's, like, waking up in the morning and just joking, joking, joking stuff. Most difficult thing they've worked through. Danielle says work stuff, and they talk about that, and there's just some dark elements to this. It's like the work stuff is... You know, that he that he works really long hours and they go, well, how have you what have you done? Basically, I didn't expect them to follow up with that. But like, what have you done basically to, like, you know, counteract that or solve that? And she's like, I work from home and I basically make home wherever he is. But there's still like an element of darkness to that. And this was eye opening. This was where I was like, fuck, damn it. This is going to be why there's an issue there because she she doesn't want to be the complainer with Robert because she loves Robert as a person and it feels petty to be like, I can't handle this schedule. I don't get to see him. And Robert looks not all there to me. He looks gaunt and his eyes look vacant. Oops. And he looks like he's not fully present. Take with that what you will. But, you know, chef life catches up to you. And it gets, it gets to a lot, of, a lot of people. He doesn't look quite right. And it's taking its toll. It just the whole thing had dark elements to it. And they go to Lindsay, and Lindsay is extremely defensive. I don't blame her. She's already been accused of tainting him. She's already been accused of influencing and, and manipulating and controlling him to, to not want to work at Lover Boy. So she's like, I'm not fucking answering this shit. And... She says, I'm still trying to figure it out. Did you figure out what yours is about Craig? And Paige is like, okay, well, since um, Lindsay is super triggered or defensive or something, I'm going to say long distance. Fair. But then she admits she's like, I don't really mind it, but Craig does. So she got off scot-free, but then they didn't show. I don't know when this took place. They showed it in the preview. Uh, when does Paige talk about like, OK, Carl and Lindsay's answers like, oh, he the towels like give me a break. OK, well, all you talked about was long distance. It's not like you got all deep in your relationship. So why does why does everyone get off scot free? But Lindsay's got to be the one that goes super deep. You know what I mean? So Daniel's like, let's get ready to go to the club. And they have like a, a cute little like dancey insert thing. I'm like, yay, some activity. Finally, we get like a little a little reminiscent semblance of summer house of yesteryear. 
So Gabby talks to Danielle, though, before they all take off. And she's like, I'm getting a weird vibe from Sierra. It's like she's kind of cold and distant with me. Shocker. What a shocker that Sierra isn't coming off warm and is kind of just sitting there like, <laughs> like, I'll smirk if I'm in the mood. This has always been my issue. We'll get to well, that's a scene we'll get to later. Now we're at the club and everyone is super into it, but they are like pouring alcohol. Not I don't know if that's literally happening, but this is the vibe. They're like pouring alcohol in people's mouths and Carl and Lindsay are off to the side and he literally says, stay next to me. Do not leave. So she hops and straddles him and they like make out and, you know, I, I can't hate it, I guess. It's just, they got to go. They can't be on the show anymore. They got to go. They, they're not, there's, what's the point of them being here, you know? So they get back home. The parallel scenes, or shots rather, of Carl and Lindsay being in their room together, going to sleep, and Danielle texting Robert to come to bed as he parties downstairs with Kyle, you know, wasn't lost on me. She's like, come to bed. And he doesn't come to bed till 3 a.m. And when he, when he wakes up at 9, he's late for work. He doesn't have his phone. He's got to run downstairs and find his phone. And he just walks out that fucking front door and goes to work. Oh, man. I got to tell you, that said a lot. Because... Been there, done that in the, God, I've done that so many times in the restaurant world where you show up to work with like no sleep and you got a whole 12 hour shift ahead of you and you're living off Diet Coke, coffee, Red Bull, whatever the fuck you can. And eventually you're like, I need a cocktail. I need a hair of the dog this. And then sometimes you start too early and then you end up wasted. And then you're like, anyone have some blow? And that seems like that's where Robert could be in his journey in life. And that's taken its toll, I tell you. It's taken its toll. Because he's about to be there for all day long. And if he's late, if he's late, that means he might have missed doing some admin shit early. So he might have missed taking inventory when he got in, or he might have missed placing an order when he got in. Something some, something, something got missed, so then he's got to maybe stay later, or maybe they're behind now. It's just a litany of things. You're you're always behind in restaurants. So, ugh, brutal. And now Danielle feels like shit because she had him cook some dinner for everybody. So she didn't spend time with him there. She had a little time with him at the club. And then she didn't feel like hanging out downstairs. She wanted to have a little cuddle with him at night. But he wanted a party because, you know what? He doesn't get to do anything. He's always at work. And then he comes up. Passes out, then he has to wake up and go to work. So she is deprived. And she's grumpy. And she is not aware of how bad she's feeling. But she is. It's all brewing. Meanwhile, Kyle and Chris are outside, and Carl comes out and goes, What's up, soft cocks? What? I forget how, like, dude, like, Carl can be the fuck is happening the energy is odd he's like i thought that that club was pretty fun right it was pretty fun how would you know you're sitting off to the side maybe just have no comment on it their whole energy is odd it was very producer staged to me very much like okay this is the scene where we talk about how you guys are going to initiate the new guy and it felt so out of off brand that's what it felt like since when do you guys do fraternity-like initiations? Maybe I'm forgetting something. It's just really bizarre. And so poor Carl, they're like, woo, party bus. We're going to go fucking wine tasting. Yes, fuck yeah. And when they walk on, <laughs> Paige goes, it smells like cocaine and cigarettes. And the party bus would smell like that. <laughs> 
can't get that smell out no matter how hard you try. And they get to the wine tasting and poor Carl. They're like, ooh, we do not have any non-alcoholic wine, but we have um, iced tea, Arnold Palmer. Ugh, bummer. Kyle, I can't remember. I think they someone says like the wine is so good it's like an orgasm or something. And Kyle's like, what's your easiest orgasm story? And he tells his stupid story. And then Sam's like, I had a guy spit in my mouth one time and I was really into it. And Kyle's like, Sam, how dare you? And then Paige is like, no, no, I'm into that too. Oh. <laughs> Paige, uh, she's a little freak. And you know what? We hear Craig's a little freak too. So, and she has said that they as the best sex she's ever had. So thank you for my visuals because I do not mind imagining them having sex. Because I'm a dirty birdie. Sorry. Can't help it. Uh, at one point, <laughs> very small moment, Gabby goes, oh, no one told me my hair looked like this. And Danielle goes, it's not that bad. <laughs> the girls are playing a game. I don't, it was like a card game or something. And it was like, tell the person next to you how you make them feel or how they make you feel. Danielle says, Paige makes her feel comfortable in her own skin. Really? Maybe I got the question wrong. Or was it, how did they look like they feel? I don't know. But just interesting how bonded these two have become, you see. Danielle notices, though, Sierra is talking to Chris and says, she looks like she needs saving. And you would be correct. Because Chris is doing his typical thing where, like, he's forcing this awkward conversation and Sierra's, like, instead of just talking to someone, getting to know her, he keeps trying to make a joke and, oh, I can't stand this guy. I get it. He's awkward around women, but, like, this was your casting? I don't need to see him on my screen. There are so many hot Latin guys. What the fuck? Like, God damn it. Danielle pulls Sierra aside, though, and she says, uh, how was it talking to Chris? And she said, Chris described me as not the warmest person, but like I'm an observer, you know. And so this segues Danielle into being like, how are you feeling about Sam and Gabby? And Sierra's like, I haven't really had any one on one time with them. That is puts some sort of onus on like some unknown person as if like someone else was supposed to arrange one on one time. Like, what does that mean? Like, do you th what, production does that like productions like, OK, here's a scene now with them. No, you do that. You make the time. And then she describes them as first it was I haven't had one on one time. That was her first excuse. Then they just feel very surface level. Well, how would you know you haven't had one-on-one -on -one time? You haven't gotten to know them. Because what we've already learned about them is that Sam had a pretty abusive ex who made her feel like shit, and that's why she has these issues and insecurities. With Gabby, she is codependent on basically every member of her family. She had a really fucked up ex, and that's why she's got all of these issues. And I still don't totally understand why you don't want to get to know her because, what, she comes off privileged? So? What does Paige come across? What does Hannah, Hannah Burner, your real good friend now, come across? Miss Tennis playing, like, her family lives in, like, a mansion. What are you talking about? So then Danielle points out, well, you see, like, rolling your eyes when Gabby talks and she's just smiling like she thinks it's funny that she makes people feel unwelcomed. So Danielle's doing her best. She kind of pretends she's like, we have similar personalities. You do? Cause you don't. But nice try though, to like try to like soft. She's trying to soften Sierra to get her to see for the sake of the show. Will you loosen up? She's like, give it a shot. Give it a shot. And then in Sierra's confessional, she's like, I'm the most like guarded person and I'm like working on it in therapy, but like it takes me a while to open up and like it's just going to take a while. 
that's fine. Please work on that in therapy. Do your thing. Do what you got to do. We all have our journeys. But why are you on a reality show wherein the format is new cast members come in every summer. You only have a summer to create the show. And we have to wait for you to come around and decide that the cast and the ensemble is good enough for you to participate in. That's what I'm sick of. She treats it like she's doing us a favor being there. Like she gets to sit back. It's an ensemble. That's what makes these shows good. These ensemble moments. But she gets to be like, I'm not like, whatever. Okay. No. You got to get out there. You got to get to know them. And someone commented on a post I put up on Instagram and said, weren't they just saying that Lindsay and Danielle don't make new people feel welcome? And that's why they always have to take on the new girls. Didn't they just say that at the last reunion? That's funny. That's real funny. I think that's just bullshit. It's like, that's your job. And Maya's doing the same thing. Maya's even kind of doing it worse. Sierra at least is just kind of staying quiet because she's guarded. And again, that's her right. People are shy. Like I, my friend, my best friend is shy. That's why she's on a reality show. Literally. That's why she would be, I say all the time, you'd be the worst reality star. But I would too, to be honest. I don't think I'd be very good. But like you want this platform, you want this, you want the notoriety, but this is your job. Your job is to come here and connect with these people. That's the premise of this show. Hello. It's not like, let's say, Vanderpump Rules, where the cast pretty much stays the same. You got to meet new people. They keep bringing new people in. And she gets to be like, oh, I don't know. I like don't. They're like surface level. I haven't spent one on one time with them. You haven't made it. You haven't even made an effort. And you think it's OK. And you think, how long do you expect us to wait? You only have a few weeks to make this show. So what the fuck? And you came in as Luke's girl. What if everyone else ha acted like that and took a while to get to know you? You would be nowhere. You wouldn't have a second season. God, makes me so mad. I'm over it. Meanwhile, Carl is pulling Gabby and Lindsay in the cart. You know, Carl, what were you thinking? Carl looks like reckless. It's like he wanted them to tip over. I think Lindsay's like, I want a girl's night because I'm mad at my boyfriend for making me fall out of the cart. I think he did it on purpose. So they go to girls night. Let, let me just, they get to girls night. We'll get to that. Meanwhile, what was this initiation thing? I, I was into it when they did like the make him drink out of the eagle, like funnel the eagle thing. The paddling though. What? The fuck? Are we still doing that? I thought that was done. I thought we were over that. I thought we decided that was just dumb. Like, what the fuck? Felt very odd. Also, like, super homoerotic, which, okay, cool, I'm into that, but like, I'm sure that's not how you guys meant it, so what the hell? Anywho, back to Girls' Night. This scene... I need it. Okay. This scene. So Lindsay says, you know, I don't, I try not to really drink in front of Carl, but like, I want to fucking go. And the, all focus is on Lindsay. I don't know if this is just how they cut it. If the girls say, it's nice to have her without Carl. You know, what's it like with Carl? And like, you're drinking and going out. Does he get upset? And Lindsay says, I'm just kind of past that point in my life. You know, like I went out to dinner at 830 and got home at 1030 and he was sleeping on the couch and I was like, hi, babe, I'm home. Granted, it was annoying the way she said it. But Danielle's making this like face and Sierra's like, I cannot with your faces. And Danielle's making faces. She's like, what? I'm not. I was like, what are you, Susie homemaker coming home from a PTA meeting? Ooh, what the fuck? Whoa. That, whoa, okay. And though Lindsay has to be like, those are just like normal things couples do. Why was, and so 
then Sierra's like, hey, but the whole Montauk thing, like, did you want to go without him? Did you want to go with him? Like, what the deal? What was that? And Lindsay says, there would be no reason for me to go to Montauk without him. And like, this is where she is totally like a, abandoning maybe her friend Danielle and maybe not checking in and saying like, you know, are you doing okay? Clearly last weekend you didn't feel so great about it, but maybe she just didn't clock it and thought she was just being judgmental about her relationship. And that makes Lindsay or Danielle say, wow, I take great offense to that. And Paige is the one who's like, do you feel sad? And she says, yeah, I would like to steal her to go to Montauk with me. And it feels like you are curbing your drinking and intensity when you're around him. And I said, oh, no. Oh, no. Did you just word that wrong? Because I thought you were hoping that she didn't drink because you knew it was a problem for Carl. But now you're saying that it's a problem she's toning it down in front of Carl? Was that just worded wrong? I'm sorry, Danielle. I don't... Oy. Are you trying to say she's not being herself around Carl? You do remember Carl's sober, right? And Lindsay says, isn't that kind of a good thing? And Danielle says, I fell in love with you the way you fucking were. Oh, no. I felt really bad for her. Lindsay. And I got very confused by Danielle. And I felt bad for Danielle, too. I, when I quit drinking, one of my very, very bestest friends who I always hung out with, I rarely see her now. Because I had to realize, like, fuck, do we only just get wasted together? Like, when I hang out with her, we don't have as much to say. And, I mean, I've known her for almost two decades. And it's a weird realization when you're like, oh, my God, were we mainly party friends? Not in a hateful way, just in a, like, holy shit. I don't have a lot for you anymore. And Danielle feels what? Like, I think maybe Danielle is kind of lying to herself about why she's okay with the way her relationship is going. So she's like, I mean, I can do what I'm doing and, and that's okay, right? And like, why can't you do that, you know, with him and, I, I'm guessing that's what it is. So Sam now steps in and she, which is a very weird thing to say. She, if she's talking about her ex that was verbally abusive, then this is a weird thing to, to equate it to. And she's like, uh, my ex was sober for 10 years and I noticed that I sent my drinking changed. <laughs> well, good. Lindsay's like, well, why am I even on a girl's night? I'm here so that I can drink and not censor myself so that we didn't talk about it. So why are we even talking about it? That is a valid question, people. Valid fucking question. But Paige, with the gaslighting, and look, I have been open about the fact that Lindsay can overreact to things. I really have. But this is not one of those times, in my opinion. This is not one of those times. Paige is like, why do you get so mad when we talk about your relationship and your friendship? We're not attacking. We're having a normal conversation. You're getting so mad. Okay, let me see you have a moment with everyone like getting on you and going at you about Craig. They would never, first of all, but you wouldn't handle it so well. Okay. And then Danielle's like, because Lindsay's like, I'm not. And Danielle's like, your body language is changing. Okay, fuck. And then Lindsay's like, well, because Danielle, you're always like being hard on me. And Danielle goes, oh, I'm sorry. If your best friend isn't hard on you, then she shouldn't be your best friend. Okay. All right. We have we have a problem. <laughs> fuck, we have a problem. 
Danielle, we have a problem. We have a little problem here because you see, yes, being honest is vital with a friend for sure. But what are you doing right now in front of these people and letting everybody gang up on your friend when you've never done that before? The issue is what? What is your issue right now? We got to we got to backtrack. We got to backtrack. I think this is all coming out wrong and I think it's because you're going through something. And I I am not turning my back on Danielle. I refuse because we all go through things and we all handle things incorrectly. And unfortunately, she's been given the power of this group to feel like she's all correct. But I could not for the life of me see what Lindsay did wrong here. I couldn't. I couldn't. Ew, next week, Corey arrives. Bleh. And Sierra's like, I would hit that. I'm like, good. Go ahead. We'll see a little more Danielle and Robert. I want to see, I do want to see a lot more of them because I need to dissect that. I need to, I need to dissect it for sure. And Lindsay's going to talk to Sam about what happened with Danielle and Sam's going to agree. And you know what? They're not wrong. I just, I don't know if Danielle is not looking at anyone's content about this. I don't know if she's kind of like tuning out the fan feedback and she just wants to live in her happy place. She used to check my stories all the time. I don't think she's checking mine anymore. She might have seen that I'm not necessarily like full team Lindsay, but not like full team Danielle. And I don't know if she's, because I know what it's like when you are still in that place and you're like, no, I am right. I am right. I am not wrong. And you don't want to go there yet to like go, maybe I am wrong. And you kind of got to stick with that. So I'm hoping she'll soften. The reunion might be too soon. It's tough with the audience being so vicious when they defend something. You know, defending Lindsay might mean really going at and attacking Danielle and that I want rather than doing that, I'm trying to be more compassionate and I'm hoping other people do that, too, because if we're not, then she's going to just really like dig her heels in. Do you know what I'm saying? So we're <laughs> let's cross our fingers. Cross those fingers, everybody, that we can do this, that we can hopefully by the reunion you know what? I should host the reunion. Andy's not going to do it right. He's going to fuck it up. He's going to fuck it up. I'm just really worried Andy's going to get it wrong. They need a sit down. You know what? They need a one-on-one -on -one sit down. Just the two of them. Just no one else because that'll make it worse. Okay. Got to start game planning this reunion. It is going to be therapy. We got this, guys. We can get them back together. Danielle is going through something that's hard, and she's never, you know, oh, we got to see how this plays out. Oh, good luck to us. All right. That wraps up Jersey House. Hope you guys are doing well, and we'll see you for Vanderpump Rules next. And Ultimate Girls Trip. I got to get a guess for that because it was so fun. Maybe Kendrick will do it again. Ooh, maybe Kendrick will do it again. Okay, guys. Love you. Mean it. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there's the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.